Hello, it looks like this stream is working. Hopefully my voice is coming out okay and stuff. If it's not, please let me know. Um, quickly before we start, I'm just going to share this on the BTP social media so people can actually watch it if they're up at this time. Of course, it's getting a bit late. <laughs> it's a working, a work night. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd do another photography tutorial. Did a live stream of one a while back and it was actually pretty good. Got some people engaging with it and stuff, which was um, promising actually. Um, so I thought I'd do it again and do one that's a little bit more specific than the last. The last one was a sort of general how Joe and I edit in um, edit our photographs in Adobe Lightroom. But you can apply these skills to any sort of photo editor that you might have. Um, this is just the one that we prefer because it allows us to sort of work with photos in a batch and that can be really handy sometimes. I'm just quickly gonna call this, um, what should we call this, what should we call this video? Abandoned photography, HDR and bracketing. So we're gonna look at some specific photography techniques um, and also editing techniques. I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna say, hi all, Liam is doing another photography editing live stream. on our YouTube channel. Got a very noisy keyboard. <laughs> um, please tune in to check it out. That will do, right, let's post that. Probably no one's gonna be up anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't even know if this is working properly, but as I say, if anything's not working, if the sound isn't quite right, or the um, like, the video is not coming through properly, please just let me know. Um, so yeah, I believe that's all been shared. So let's just let's just go for it. Um, I'll probably find there's been a problem with the whole thing when I watch it back later. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's a bit hard to sort of adjust it whilst people are watching. I don't want to spend too long um, messing around with it. But yeah, there's two viewers. Oh yeah, that's something. Um, yeah, the audio is coming out. The microphone is coming out apparently. And the video is coming out. Right, we're all set. So, first of all, what we're actually going to do today now, you know, I edit these photos anyway, so I thought I'd just show you what I'm doing as I do it, as a little bonus. So I've edited three um, pictures here. Um, now we're only looking at these first two, so I'm gonna enlarge these. You can see this picture here, this is basically what we're trying to achieve. Now this was just a quick rough one that I knocked up, so we're gonna try and um, come up with something a little bit better. But as you can see here, I've got this picture of this nice abandoned church that I went to. I was actually hoping to demonstrate this by taking a photo inside the church because it's really nice. It's got that sort of classic abandoned dusty vibe without vandalism. Um, and it sort of would have been perfect for it with the light coming in through the windows and stuff. But unfortunately, when I went there, it was sealed up. So instead, we're just gonna have to settle for a picture of the outside. But this could apply really to any, any photography situation where you've got a lot of high contrast going on. So you've got stuff going on with the bright sky, and then you've also got a lot of shade going on with the foreground. So maybe like this, where you've got a lot of trees, so it might be quite shady, but then the sky is still bright. Um, and usually, you know, you take a photo of it and it would look something like this, which is the original photo. You can see here, we've got like a lot of shadow there in the porch. There's a lot of fair bit of shadow surrounding the church. Um, and then the sky is sort of like bright and quite white looking. Um, it's, it's not a bad photo, but it's just not, you know, it's not sort of like, it doesn't quite look sort of, you know, it doesn't blow you away, let's just say. <laughs> um, and some people like the natural effects. Others prefer to do a bit of tweaking. Some people prefer to go overboard, and this is something we'll talk about shortly. 
Um, but yeah, this photo here, I have exaggerated the effect a little bit just to show you what we're trying to achieve. But as you can see, the sky, we've, although we haven't got any clouds, which might appear if they were there, we've got this sort of more bluish look. We've got a little bit of color and detail to the sky. Um, we've got some detail going on in the porch of the church, in the shadows and also under this tree. Um, and then we've also got all the detail in the lighter areas like the grass and the top of the church and the exterior as well. So the whole image is sort of evenly lit. You know, we've got a few shadows still, like the porch under the actual trees themselves. But for the most part, the image is a lot more evenly lit than this, where you've got some really bright areas that are almost too bright and some really dark areas that are too dark. With this one, we've got much more of a, a balance and it just gives a nice effect, quite like a surreal effect at times. And if you exaggerate it, it can look very surreal. But you can also keep this to a minimum, and just enhance the image in general. So to do this best, always shoot in RAW. And basically, if you don't know, when you're taking photos, you can shoot in JPEG, which is a normal image format, or you can shoot in RAW, which means you have to then edit those and then turn them into JPEGs when they're done. But the advantage is that the RAW means you can brighten and darken the shadows and highlights a lot. You can change your lighting, the white balance, all of that stuff after you've taken a photo a lot without the image getting too distorted and noisy. So I definitely recommend RAW, especially for sort of like night photography or photos like this where you've got bright and dark areas that you want to edit after. So we're going to go into Adobe Lightroom and as I said you can use any editing program you want to do this job. This is just what I'm using. Um, I find it the best but you do have to pay for it so you may not want to do that. So it's entirely fair if you don't um, and those are the reasons why. So um, yeah let's have a look. Let's see what we can do. So to, to get away with this effect, to pull this effect off you need well, there's various avenues you can go down. Um, what you could do, you could just take the image. So say this image here, for instance, let's start with this first one. This image, which is the, the unedited one that I showed you a minute ago. What we can do is simply just come down with the highlights a lot. And then with the shadows, we can just bring those up a lot. And what you might find is the whole image becomes too bright when you're doing this. You can then just take the whole thing down a little bit. And you can maybe go a bit further with the highlights. And maybe a little bit further with the shadows. So that's one way to achieve the effect. And as you can see, the overall result is pretty good already. Let's just compare it. So that's super quick. And this is something Joe and I always do with just a little bit is reduce the highlights, increase the shadows to nearly all of our photos. We do that just a bit, but I've sort of gone overboard here um, just to show you. But look, you can see the difference. Here we've got this sort of overblown highlights going on with the white, and then on the after image, we've got this much nicer bluish sort of, um, yeah, bluish tone. And if it was cloudy at the time, as I say, you'd actually see the clouds, but <laughs> um, yeah, it was obviously a very bland sky when I took this. Um, and actually, I took this one in the dark. It was a long exposure, just to be clear. It wasn't that dark, but it was dusk. Um, the image has come out a bit brighter because I did it for about 30 seconds, but just don't worry about that for now. It doesn't really matter for what we're doing here. Um, it's also a little bit bright, so I might just bring saturation down a little bit. It's like the colors are a little bit too too strong so now that looks a little bit more atmospheric let's just say and then another thing you can do to achieve this sort of HDR or tone matte look as some people will call it which is a sort of extreme version is you can increase this clarity slider and look at that it looks it's an interesting one isn't it <laughs> um, it's very extreme um, a lot of people don't like it and for good reason and I think with phone filters becoming more and more of a thing nowadays compared to when Joe and I started photography then this is kind of associated not just with sort of overcooking your photo 
but also with sort of amateurish phone photography. Uh, people would look at that and just be like, you've whacked a filter on it on your phone. And they wouldn't necessarily think, oh, you've gone to the effort of editing this up. And in fairness, they've probably made a good point because at the end of the day, if you don't <laughs> take the photo, if you don't edit the photos quite seriously enough, they don't expect to be taken seriously. <laughs> um, as many people will let you know, especially amongst some of the urban explorers. Back in the early to uh, early 2010s, when I first got into this and photography and stuff, the HDR thing was actually like really, really big. Um, it was in books, like lots of professional urban explorer photographers. They had their photo op photography books with prints and they all had this HDR effect in there and it looked really cool, like it looked really good at the time as a kid. I was like, oh, that looks so good, how'd they do that? Um, but I think people actually quickly grew a bit tired of it and now when someone posts something like that online, um, people tend to take the mickey out of it a bit. <laughs> um, so, you know, I think some HDR is, is good, but if you overdo it, it can be pretty ugly and understandably it kind of distracts from actually sort of the, the, the actual beauty of whatever it is you're taking a photo of so you don't want to sort of make it too fake um, of course you can have your own style and stuff but whatever you do le less is more i think um so yeah we've got like this photo you can already see that the one on the right looks slightly improved from the one on the left um just you know we've got some more sort of um balance in the the lighting of the image, we haven't got like these really bright areas and these really dark areas. They're a little bit more evened out in the photo on the right. And all I did was tweak the highlights and shadows. So like literally, you know, we could do this edit in 10 seconds. So we're gonna put it back to normal, um, like so. We're gonna put it back to normal quickly. So this is the original, let's say, all you do, take the highlights all the way or more or less all the way down. The shadows more or less all the way up. We've got this. Set the overall exposure to something that is a little bit more desirable. Maybe to about there. And then you could say that's your photo done. Um, now what you're going to find is if you look in these shadow areas, it's starting to look quite like noisy. You're getting these sort of different colours going on like um, some sort of like greenish and bluish little squiggles in there. And this is the noise that you get when you take a photo in the dark um, and you lighten it up, you brighten it loads. And if you're shooting in RAW, the effect of that is gonna be less than JPEG. You're gonna really destroy an image if you lighten it this much in JPEG. Um, but here it's a little bit more subtle, we have to zoom in, but it, it doesn't make for a particularly sharp image. That's the thing. The image here is not particularly sharp. So that if we just compare that to um, the edit. Yeah, so yeah, ultimately that's what happened. So what we're gonna do, we're not gonna compare just yet. <laughs> um, we're going to reset it quickly. Just reset this picture. Um, I'm, I'm forgetting which one is which now because I've already edited like one or two of these. So we're just going to reset them all. Why not? Let's keep it simple. Right. One, two, three, four, five. So one of these is the one that we don't want. So this one here is the, the toe mapped one. Right. So this is another thing we can do, and this basically does the same thing, but it takes it to the next level, and it just makes the photo, the overall result much better. Um, so we're gonna choose another picture now for this. And as you can see, all these pictures I've got, I've got five, except for this one where I've already done an edit, but I've got five versions of each shot but they're all taken with different lighting. So we've got the normal photo, the first one, which is sort of the mid level, basically how you take the photo normally. Then we've got a really dark one, then we've got, and look, you can see in this really dark one, the sky actually, we've got some clouds. You can't see anything in the rest of it, 
but you can see some sort of pattern in, in the sky. And that's what you want. That's the whole point of this. If you compare it to the really bright one, there's no detail in the sky. But what we do have is we can see very clearly now inside this porch um, and also in these darker areas under the trees. And if we compare that to even just this one, it's much, much harder to see what's in these darker areas. So as I say, I could just up the shadows a lot, decrease the highlights. But as you can see, the sky, we're starting to get the detail. But if we look in there, especially in the darker areas, it's starting to get a bit noisy. It's still loading the preview. But yeah, look, you can see this sign. Look, it's like, it's got like these little yellow and blue dots and that, and that is, yeah, just the noise that results from basically trying to brighten areas of your photo way too much. So a solution to that is to take a darker photo and a lighter photo and one in the middle if you want and um, use the best of both of all those photos and merge them and combine the light parts of one photo with the dark parts of one photo and the one in the middle and then what you've got is all the dark areas, the light areas and the middle areas all taken as nice photos and they're not going to get distorted because you've not had to brighten those photos. Um, they're just already taken like that, they're just merged together um, and it can do this automatically on a lot of computer software including Lightroom which is what I'm going to show you. So what you can do, you can do what's called bracketing um, and that's what I mentioned in the title of this video, bracketing. So that basically just means it's a uh, complicated sounding word just for taking several photos that have different exposures. So we've got our mid one, we've got our dark one, our semi dark one, our semi bright one and our really bright one. You could just take three photos, so I could just take the mid one, the darkest and the lightest. Um, but I've gone for five just to sort of allow a little bit more versatility, but I won't worry about it too much. We've got a nice wide range of exposures and the key to this is take the photo on the tripod so it doesn't move between photos because when you overlay them, they've obviously all got to line up perfectly um, or at least close enough for the, the computer to figure out how to line them up. So if you're moving the shot, it's not gonna work, or, which should be quite obvious. <laughs> now you could just take these photos one at a time and you could just lower something like the shutter speed um, on each photo um, between shots, but that means you have to touch the camera a lot and you could wobble it in between photos and move it slightly. So another thing you could do is set up what most cameras have, most DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, set up a bracketing mode. And basically it just um, adjusts it for you between photos. So you just take the normal photo, which is why that one is first. And then the next one you take, it already have darkened it down loads. So you just take that one and you take the next, it'll have brightened it slightly. Then the next is going to brighten it a lot and then for the last one it's going to have brightened it loads so um, essentially it's just combining lighter and darker photos together to get the lighter and darker parts of the image all coming out nice and clear um, that is the simplest way to describe what we're doing and what you can do so you've taken these photos so let's just select all these five of the same shot, let's right click and then you go photo merge. So this is the Lightroom um, tool for doing this. Photoshop has it um, and there's probably loads of other programs, maybe some just dedicated to doing this. So you go photo merge HDR and that is the effect we're going for. So I just move this over so it's creating a little preview. Do Joe and I do this for all our photos? No, it's a lot of effort. It's something I've only just started experimenting with, which is why I thought I'd do a little tutorial because I think I've just, I'm just about there. Um, but yeah, we're creating this little preview um, to show you before we do it. But yeah, it seems like it could be quite good because I find I take a lot of photos in different situations where there might be like really bright windows stopping the light from coming in or flooding the light, flooding the room with too much light. So you've got like a nice photo of a room 
but then the windows are just these white blobs <laughs> um, and that happens obviously in, in a lot of interiors so that is one of the kinds of photos where something like this bracketing would benefit it um, so that we can see those windows better maybe what's outside them and what's in the room so what we have here got this little merge images thing all five images successfully merged so it's lined all the photos up the dark ones the light ones and the middle ones and this is the end result um, ignore the red for now but the end result it's much more you know we've got like a slightly bluish sky going on here we've got a slightly lighter porch area the overall image is a bit bright but we can adjust that one thing that is going to happen because you're taking long exposure photos which photos uh, last for maybe a couple of seconds uh, because it needs to let a lot of light in for some of these shots it will mean that you're going to get stuff like the wind and the breeze blowing the leaves on the trees and stuff so this is going to make the leaves sort of a bit blurry like you can kind of see that here um, and if you're overlaying loads of photos where the leaves are all in different places because they've been blowing around you're going to get some weird stuff going on so we can change this de ghost amount and we're going to put it on medium and that will fix that for us somehow it will sharpen those up um, and these red areas the de ghost overlay lay, overlay these red areas are where the movement has been going on um, where the wind probably was blowing the leaves which yeah it does correspond quite nicely actually it proves the point um, so if you're just taking a picture of like a non-windy place or an interior you wouldn't need to do any of this de-ghosting but where we're outside and the wind's moving them we are going to put a bit of that on so we're going to merge that now and whilst that's doing that I'll just quickly show you what the de-ghosting does so this image you can see here I believe I merged this one whoops it's gone very blurry yeah. but you can see this tree area like there there is obviously some some blur in them but it looks kind of natural like it looks like a normal photo still um, you can see like, the individual tweaks and stuff but if I compare that to one where I didn't have the de ghost in we've got this weird sort of like pattern going on where we've got this sort of it's hard to explain it but it's not you can see you've got like this sort of you can see some twigs and then it's sort of white fuzzy stuff with a sort of shadow around it I guess that's what they call the ghost that we're trying to get rid of <laughs> and no there's no paranormal in this photo <laughs> um, but yeah um, yeah like here you can see yeah some weird pixels going on here and that is the ghosting so if you put that de-ghosting on it will get rid of that but that is not an essential for what we're doing here the essential bit is you merge the photos together and it gives you a better photo really um, so for instance if I click up here we can open up our stack of photos so we've got what this one is the end product and we've got the first one, the second one, the third one, fourth one, fifth one. So these six, or these five even, are the ones that I took at the different levels of lighting. And remember, they're all taken from the exact same spot. The first one is where it's merged them all together using the tool that I just showed you. So to do that again, you go right click photo merge HDR, and that's what does that. Um, so whoops so for this one this is our final product and it looks good you know you can see you've got much more even lighting across the image you know you can see what's going on in the sky and you can see what's going on down in the graphs um, so there's quite like a nice variety of lighting going on there um, it's all nice and sort of evenly lit we can even see what's in the porchway quite clearly I think that's still loading kits a little bit fuzzy but you can see it clearly and there's none of this sort of like discoloration that results from the noise of lightening up the dark areas um, 
But what we're going to do, because it doesn't quite look right, we're now going to have to tweak it a little bit. So you can just come down with the exposure. So that's already looking better. But now what we see is, yeah, let's do that. So you can see now we've put basically put the shadows back in and they're still now again, they're too dark. <laughs> so we've reversed what we've done. But because we've got that extra flexibility, because this image is using all those five images, we can bring the shadows up again, like that. And now that's brought this area back out and you can see it quite clearly again. I hope. Yeah, so yeah, so it's brought, it's brought it back up and out. And maybe darken it down just a little bit again the highlights you can bring some of them down a little bit some of the shadows can come up a bit more and then we can maybe just take the vibrance down a little bit because it is a bit too garish in color the grass especially so yeah as you can see you can really exaggerate this effect if you want like so um, and you've got, you know, you might look at that and be like, oh, it doesn't look like loads has been done to it. I know you can see it looks slightly edited, but it doesn't look loads different, but this is where it's handy to compare with the original. <laughs> um, just so you can actually just say, I, I like it, I like the difference, and you can compare. Um, so this is the original. That is the photo composite that we've just made. It's called a composite, obviously, because it's made of several photographs. <laughs> but there's the difference. So what can we see? We can see that the sky is a bit more natural in color. So the human eye actually evens out the shadows and the, the highlights sort of automatically. That's what your brain does when you bring light in. So the sky doesn't look just like a white blob <laughs> when you're looking outside. If I was to look out this window here, um, I'd be able to see the windowsill, the whole bit of the room, and I'd be able to see the hedge that is outside the window all very clearly. However, if I was to take a photo of that, if I wanted to show what was on the windowsill and in the room, the window would come out just all white where the bright light was flooding in. Um, and what we're trying to do with this effect is basically produce something that's actually, if anything, more natural um, to what we see. Um, so we can see the sky is a little bit more um, cloudy. We can actually see a bit of like color and detail in the sky. It's not just pure white. And also these shadows aren't just pure black. We can actually see what's, what's in there slightly. Um, and comparing that to the original, you can just see We've got some extreme dark and extreme light areas going on. Even this tree on the left is really contrasty. In the edit, you can see that actually we can now differentiate the branches from the leaves. Um, you can see that, and that's quite nice. Like It's quite nice to sort of see that level of detail. Um, maybe using something where the leaves blowing in the trees isn't the best option for this mode because of the movement that, that that's going to give between the photographs that you take. But you know, we're just sort of demonstrating the effect at the end of the day today. Um, and yeah, that's like a, that's quite a cool image, I'd say. Um, just going to straighten it up a little bit. Another tip is always straighten the horizons. I said about this in the last one, there's nothing more that's sort of a rookie error than having wonky horizons. It's easy to fix. Um, very, very simple to adjust it, even not if you do it on your phone. Um, <laughs> but it does sort of improve your shots a lot if the horizons are straight. We've got some comments on here. Sorry, I've only just seen this. Um, I'm sort of flicking through the screens here. Um, also brings the branches above the house out better from Jim. Cheers. Yeah, there you go. That's it. I'm glad someone can see the difference. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's just give that a little look. Yeah, so yeah, and that, actually that's a really good point you make, something that I haven't mentioned. So if you look here, we can see where the sky is so light, it bleeds out over the top of these leaves. 
Um, like it looks like Jesus is coming out or something. <laughs> like you get this sort of flood of light, of bright light. If we compare that, you can actually that the ends of the branches now look way more natural, like they're crisp. There's no light flooding over them. Um, and if you compare that to here, if you look in this area, line up a little bit. Whoops. Yeah, so, right. You can see what's going on there. So we've got like this sort of very whitish sort of edges to the leaves, to the trees, and that's not really natural. But if I, oops, not that way. If I move it this way, see these whitish edges anymore. It's nice and crisp and you can see exactly where the leaves stop and the branches, and the branches are lit exactly the same as they are in the middle of the tree. We don't get this sort of like halo type thing coming out from the sky. And even the edge of the building, you can see it looks a little bit pale right on the very edge. If you compare it to the image composite, the edge is a lot more crisp now. So that's another advantage. Now, iPhones, automatically do this this HDR effect sometimes a bit too much I think um, but it's becoming something that is like a inbuilt feature of a lot of phones now uh, where the highlights and the shadows will get balanced out and it often takes two photos and combines them um, automatically as you take the photos you might notice in some photos you're gonna get these like bluer skies and you know if you take a picture of someone who's standing with their back to the sun um, you might find if you take that photo on an iPhone they're going to be kind of like almost look as if they're lit up a bit and that's because it's balanced it out automatically um, for that reason I think you know the HDR look again it does sort of have some of these connections and connotations with maybe sort of more amateurish phone photography nowadays um, but I think if you use it either for like an artistic effect or subtly just to improve your photo the result actually is like still pretty good and, and worthwhile we've got some more comments adam's advanced adventures mudlarkin good to see you cheers um just watching i did have a quick look at your channel a few few days ago um thanks for checking out ours and stuff um we've got this uh, mudlarkin video coming out with Nicola White um, in a couple of couple of well weeks or months, I've got to edit that one up still. Um, but yeah, it's great to see some people interested in that stuff and that side of things. Um, Toby, cheers! I appreciate the praise. I think your channel is amazing, mate. It means a lot to us. Um, it's really, really good to to hear the good praise, and it ultimately, it's what keeps us going and actually um, makes it worth doing. Because <laughs> I think if we were doing this. As much as Joe and I do do BTP because it's something we like doing, I think if we were sort of talking to a, a wall forever without any feedback, <laughs> any interaction with others, then we'd probably lose faith. So cheers. <laughs> um, Dave has said, is the green a bit vivid? No, I agree with you there, definitely. Um, it is, it's, it's not what I personally am a fan of. Um, so yeah, I think for some reason, I think because what has happened is basically the shadows and the highlights, even of just the blades of grass themselves have been balanced out, it's kind of become a bit overdone and it's sort of made it that like the grass is almost glowing slightly. So I think that's why it's made it a bit too green. So what you can do, you could either just take the saturation or the vibrance down of the whole picture. But then if you just want to remove the green from the grass, in Lightroom, you've got this thing here, saturation under color, and you can just take that green slider down a little bit. There we go. And that just reduces it. So you can see the difference if I turn that on and off. So yeah, that's a lot, that's a lot better. Good point. I'm glad people are actually pointing out the differences it makes to the photos because sometimes I feel like where it's something I look at you know all the time i've sort of become attuned to these fine differences but i think it's nice when um you know i think people get a bit technical about photography and stuff and sometimes the differences 
aren't really going to make much difference to you know someone that's looking at a photo casually online um, but obviously if people can notice it um, that does mean that it's worth doing so that's why we're here <laughs> um, so yeah and Melanie cheers love your channel again much appreciate it really good to see you on here and glad people are watching even at 11 o'clock at night <laughs> um, yeah Good to see you. So I actually took these photos today as well. So I've come back home and I just thought spontaneously I'd do this tutorial. As I say, I was hoping to get some photos inside the church, but it wasn't accessible, unfortunately. Um, so with the tutorial, let's see what else we've got going on. So that's like two of them I've done now. Let's see what else we can do. I took this photo. I thought this was a good example inside the porch of the church. Um, how is this going to work out? So, right, yeah, so what we've got going on here is this one. So I've merged these photos already. I've already done this um, earlier. Not that one. This one looks like a good one to use as an example. So we've got our normal photo, the midpoint, as you could call it. This is how the photo would look normally if I didn't use this bracketing technique. And it's not the sort of technique you'd want to use for all your photos because it is a bit awkward having to take five versions of every photo and it fills up your space on your memory cards a lot as well. But you might want to do it for a few specific shots that need it or shots that you really like. So we've got the first image. Now as you can see, you can see the shadows quite well. You can see the highlights quite well, but it does look a little bit washed out on the grass and the outside. And it also looks a little bit, um, if we zoom in here, it looks a little bit sort of like it's been brightened up a lot and the camera sort of struggled a little bit and you've got some noise again going on. It's a bit sort of blurry looking in these shadowy areas. Um, so again, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go that one and I, all these five photos here are all the same image taken at the different lighting levels. Now it looks like because I had to do because this was taken in the dark, these two photos haven't quite gotten as bright as I would like them to because I think my camera couldn't go any brighter. <laughs> it already only went to 30 seconds. So really if this effect was done properly, this image might be more like that and then this one would be much brighter. Uh, but my camera timer was already on its maximum, I think, when I took the first one. So it hasn't been able to brighten them, but just don't worry about that. Imagine you took it in the daytime and we've got the normal middle photo. We've got the dark one, the sort of medium um, exposure, the slightly light one, and then the really bright one. So again, we're gonna merge them all together. Photo merge HDR. And then we're going to put a low amount of this de-ghosting on because I think where we're in this porch, there's not as many trees that are going to be blowing around in the wind. We probably don't need it as much. And if in the preview it doesn't show any red areas that move between photos, I'll just remove that effect entirely. We might not need it. Got some music in the background, so hopefully you can hear it. And it's not too overpowering. <laughs> Just some some simple beats to um, <laughs> make make the tutorial feel a little bit more professional. So it's building our preview. It's taking its time. Let's just check the, the post out quickly. I think the computer is struggling a little bit. Hopefully it will do it in a second. I can see there's a little bit of a delay, I think, between what's happening in real time and what's happening in this sort of live stream thing. Not sure. Um, the preview I'm getting, I think, is a bit behind. But I'm just going to trust that you can see what I can see as I do it. So now we've got our sort of end result. And we're just going to check for any of these reddish areas where the ghosting might have happened. I don't think there's any, really. Not like last time where we had big red blobs where the trees were blowing around. So I'm just going to remove this de-ghosting. It's a bit beside the point of what we're doing here anyway. It's just a random 
thing you can do to sort of mitigate movement between the photos, I suppose. So we're gonna make a composite now of all these five images. And we're waiting for this to do itself up in the top left to complete itself. There we go. Takes a little bit of a while. <laughs> it's high tech stuff this. Um, right, so now we've got our six images. We've got the the five originals there. Um, and then we've got the final product. And as you can see already, this is a, a good, a better photo, I think. We've got, you know, the grass itself, it's not too bright now. Um, even in the brightest areas, we can still see detail and it's not just pure white. Even in the sky here on the edge, we've got a bit of a weird color distortion going on, I think. This bit must have been blowing in the wind a little bit. Um, but we've got sort of, you know, more of a blue tone there to the sky. And then in the shadows. Yeah, I don't know. There's something just about those shadows that look quite crisp to me. I think it's because we've got both, like, we've got both the highlights and the shadows even within the darker areas. So if you look at the bricks, we've got like quite a nice normal middle tone but then around the edges you've got these dark nice dark sort of gaps between them if we compare that to the original so there's the composite there's the original the obvious difference is everything's a little bit darker where it was too bright outside whoops but then if you look at these bricks and stuff you can just see there's like quite a nice richness to it, I suppose you'd say. If you look here at the bricks on the left, they look a lot less pale. Obviously it's a bit darker, that's partly why. But it just looks a little bit more, yeah, I don't know. It's just a much more sort of even, evenly lit photograph. And then we can sort of play up this effect even more by turning the highlights down even more than that. So now we can see all these leaves um, like really well. And then we're gonna boost the shadows a bit as well. So this is now getting into the realms of this sort of exaggerated HDR effect a little bit. Um, but this is how you do it. If you see these Photos are something that's quite common even with the abandoned photography, even now, even after the extreme HDR has become a bit of a joke, you still see it a lot. If you're wondering how it's done, it's not, maybe you can do it for Instagram filters, but <laughs> people will probably do something like this, some of the professionals at least. Um, and we can see now we've got like this sort of almost like dusty texture going on. Um, and that's just the result of this. It's just the look that it gives you. Um, and yeah, it looks nice. Uh, one thing I do think is some of the light areas are a little bit too unnatural now. Like this blue has been darkened a bit too much to the point where it is literally bright blue. Um, so we're going to just incre increase the whites a little bit. Now we'll just make some of the brightest spots a little bit more white. Or we can use this, which is another way of doing it which just does the same. Not sure if I'm messing with this a bit too much here. Yeah, we're not gonna bother with that. We're just gonna do it this way. <laughs> Even even my skills have their limitations. <laughs> Still got to get good with the curves and stuff. Um, but yeah, you can see we've got a really cool image and it actually one of the things it has done is give you a real nice texture. Compare that, our composite to the original. That one just looks a bit pale, a bit washed out. Obviously it's overexposed, but it just doesn't look a great picture really. Um, the areas outside the windows almost just look like a waste. They're almost just ugly, bright areas that are too much. 
Whereas with this one, everything's nice and rich from the trees outside to the bricks inside, everything looks nice and rich and it's got this really nice little texture to it. It's a bit annoying, every time I zoom in it has to load, so I probably should just not bother doing that. But you can just see we've got this really nice defined look to the whole picture now. Um, I might just bring the shadows down a bit just to bring back a bit of that shading because you don't want to sort of make it look unnatural where you've got no shadows, no highlights because that's just a bit like unnatural. You always should have some shadow, some highlights. You don't want to actually get rid of that but you may just want to remove that a little bit. We've got some more um, comments, video and speech line up here. That's great, I'm glad about that because I've noticed before sometimes it doesn't always work. Tim, cheers for um, watching, great to see you. Tim is my art teacher from, from A-Level um, and big inspiration actually, even now, behind a lot of the photography that I do. Um, I don't do much painting and stuff, I should do, should do more of it, but um, I think with the photography, I did actually a lot about um, abandoned stuff and ruins and stuff at, at school. Um, and I think a lot of the lessons that I learned then sort of things that I bear in mind now even with the photos and um, yeah it all sort of goes full circle really <laughs> um, right great to hear we've got exploring with tints cheers for tuning in um, should be able to remove the purple and green colours with the chromatic aberration removal tool cheers that is a good tip and one that I was not aware of. I've heard of the chromatic aberration. I knew roughly that that's what it meant, but I didn't know that there was a tool to sort of fix that. So cheers, you've definitely helped me out here. <laughs> Let's have a look how you do it. Chromatic aberration. See, even I'm learning. It's a good little bit of discourse we've got going on here. A bit of an exchange. Um, so it could be in one of these bits here. Chromatic aberration. I'm sure I've seen it on here somewhere. If not, I'm gonna to have to Google it quick. Let's just do that. Got one of these mechanical keyboards. Um, and yeah, it's so noisy, but they're meant to be good. But people, will make, people always walking past my room think, oh, you know that keyboard it makes so much noise it must be a piece of junk but <laughs> actually <laughs> apparently it means it's actually better <laughs> but um, noisier yeah um, under the profile tab let's quickly check this right lens corrections so this is another thing some of this chromatic aberration especially at the edges of the photo it results also from sometimes the way the light comes in the lens, I think, and also distorts that way. So, um, yeah, so here we go, profile. Right, so it does have a section to remove the aberrations, but I don't know if it's quite worked. Going to have a look here, see if it will do it this way. Yeah, no, it's not. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't seem to, to want to do it this way. Hmm. Tinsk, if you can help me out here, please do. <laughs> um, so you say there's a tool. Is there some kind of like brush I can go in with to do that? Or am I best to, um, yeah, should it work with this button and it just hasn't really worked for this photo? Maybe that's the case. Um, one thing I do to remove some of the, the colour, the noise um, from the shadows is this. Um, I will come into here, the detail section and then come up with the colour a little bit. And if you notice, if I make it exaggerated, you can see what taking photos in the dark and brightening them does to photos. It adds in like all this horrible squiggly colours like these little red bits and purple bits. And if I bring this color slider up, it removes them without actually 
changing the color of the overall look of the photo so that's actually a really good one especially if you're taking photos in the dark um, and you're having to use really high ISO which gives you a lot of noise um, so there should be a little pipette icon sampled of purple or green and that will remove the color band right let's have a look got one for the white balance um, let's find out there's got to be a thing that will tell me on Google here here we go lens corrections this is it this is the one I think D fringe this looks like it um, so let's try it use the eyedropper to take the purple and green fringe colors for correction so that sounds about right so this looks sort of purple to me let's try that I think that sort of already removed that a little bit um, and then for the green let's just try the purple again Oops, and let's just go enter. Right, this is a good example. We've got a really bright red bit here, which we don't want. So let's try and select that. Right, it doesn't seem to work on that one. Gonna have to play around with this a bit more, but it could definitely be useful once I know how to use it properly. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure what's happening here doesn't seem to have quite worked there actually that it seems to work quite well there if we look here um, you can see this purple or this really bluish line going along the edge of this beam and if I turn the correction on that's removed it that has now gone if we zoom in it's gone to more black like gray and black and white so it's sort of removed that color seems to have done some weird stuff with the sky a little bit but don't really need to worry about that for now. It's more just this weird coloration, discoloration even. So yeah, I guess, you know, these are all things you can do and you might have to play around with these things a little bit um, to practice them. Maybe that'd be another tutorial once I know how to do it. <laughs> but um, we can see here that it has worked. If you look closely, you can see these purplish bits. Quite thin, but there's some purplish bits along the edges. And if I turn the correction on, you can just about see that they do disappear. Like, look here on this leaf. Currently, there's a big purple circle, big blob of purple there. And now I turn the correction on, and it's gone back to the blue colour of the sky, much more natural. So it does seem to actually work quite well. Um, it's just more subtle but yeah there we go so we've got this overall effect here um, what else do we want to do to this photo then just to make it look nice we might as well finish it off so one thing we could do we could add a little bit of clarity as I say we don't want to overdo it like that because um, that actually really even though some people will think oh this is like an HDR look effect it's sort of cheat way actually what it does is makes you lose a lot of the tone um, the depth uh, um, the, like the depth of the different lighting areas of the photo so it's made the shadows really black and the highlights really white again which is basically what we're trying to undo so that's why it's best to stick away steer away from this slider but you could add a little bit if you wanted and the texture does similar it sort of does it in more of like a sort of sharp crispy away there's probably a technical difference but that's how i sort of see it um it doesn't change the the shadows and the highlights so much but it sort of makes the edges and stuff look a bit more crispy but again it looks a bit unnatural so we don't want to we don't want to overdo that Tinks has said, do I shoot in RAW? Yeah, I do. Um, 
this is in raw at the moment. Um, perhaps, you know, some of these edges maybe are just a bit too far gone and maybe where I've done the, the photo composite, perhaps that's kind of um, lost some of the detail there and I can't completely get rid of those. Um, but yeah, I think raw is definitely the way to go. Um, I always used to think for years that you didn't need, that raw was sort of a bit overkill because, you know, it takes up so much space. You could spend, you know, like 10 gigabytes of space just on a couple of, you know, one photo album or something or a handful of photo albums. Um, and like, you know, I've literally got 300 odd photo albums or more on my computer. So you don't want to um, burn through your storage, but it is worth it. Um, you know, when you're taking night photography, um, let's, let's just quickly have a look here. This could be something we can do. I'm gonna import a JPEG image and a raw one, and we're gonna compare the difference. So if I take one of these really dark images, just as an example, um, let's say, this, let's just say this one here. Let's see what one this is. This image is 3352. So let's import the JPEG version of that. 3352. There it is. So I'm going to import this one quickly just so we can compare. So, where is it? I think it is this one. No, it's this one here. Right. I'm just quickly gonna sort of favorite these, add them to the quick collection. Cause I'm gonna wanna have them side by side. So yeah, right. So I believe this one is the raw version. And if we, increase the exposure to try and brighten this really dark photo you can do it quite a lot you know there's a lot of noise in this image horrible amount of noise when you zoom in but say this was an emergency and this was the only photo you got in the dark of somewhere you've saved it to an extent it's still a usable picture that shows the place so we've been able to boost that up so much look at the difference and that's the same photo just brightened um, and that's still a, not a bad photograph but if we go to the JPEG version and try and boost this one up weird things are starting to happen <laughs> it doesn't actually change the the photo at all it just sort of applies like a, a wash over it almost like a, a light tint to the top of the photo if you compare the difference it's quite obvious which is the better photo and it's definitely the raw one the jpeg one um you, if you look here we've got like these really crispy black areas where i guess the image is like it's kind of gotten a bit messed up from being pushed to its very limits um and then the white areas they're still really too bright um they're still way too bright. Um, they've not sort of, yeah, like they're not, they're not adjusting as we brighten it. So if we brighten the raw one, see it's starting to sort of break at that point, but that's quite a massive extreme. Um, but the other thing with the JPEG lighting in it, let's try and match them roughly. Yeah, so we've got the raw here. The colours are fairly reasonable. Um, still got the red to the brick, the green of the, the trees. Obviously you can adjust all that anyway. With the JPEG, it's sort of gone like grey. It's still got that sort of glazed over look as if we've just put like a white sheet in front of it and we're looking through or something. You've got like this weird blurriness going on. Like it's really, really muddy looking. Um, it just doesn't 
look good anymore. And if we try and reduce some of the highlights, you know, it doesn't look too bad, but it's got this sort of faded appearance. So I guess that's usable for a JPEG. Let's check it. That's not, you know, we've saved that image a little bit, but not loads. I think that's as far as you can push it. And if you compare them, they're not massively different in their brightness level. But if we look at the raw, look how different that is. I mean, that one's really dark and that one's really bright. And all we've done is lightened it. When you take the raw photos, it, as far I'm not quite sure, but as far as I understand, it takes a lot more information than what you see in that first image. So you might see that the areas are, are really pitch black, but secretly it's also captured all of this stuff that's in those dark areas and you can't see it until you brighten it. Whereas with a JPEG, all it ever captures is what you see in the first photo and you can brighten it and brighten it, but this dark area will still be a pitch black area with no detail. Um, so that's why. And also the white balance is just a bit off really. It just looks sort of like a bit weird, a bit greeny sort of thing. So that's why you want to shoot in raw. If you're doing photos in the dark, um, night photography, um, anything like that. I might do another quick example. Let's have a look. Because I did, I did do some good ones a few days ago. Right, let's have a look. What one could we try this on here? We could try it on. Let's just see, let's scroll back. So this image, nice image of this rather splendid chimney. And this was taken in the pitch black at night. And because I shot it in raw and I did the long exposure, I brought out a really nice bright photo as a result. Um, we're now gonna bring the JPEG one in. Here. Let me just check, yep. If we're gonna bring the JPEG version in. Let's wait for it to do its thing. Right. Oops, not quite works. So again, we've got the JPEG and the raw. Now if I try and brighten the JPEG up, again, something weird's going on. I know it's slightly wonky, don't worry about that. But you can see here I've brightened it and the highlights are just too bright. But then the shadows, they've got this weird thing where they've kind of been broken, <laughs> where it's tried to lighten up a lot of it. But then in the really darkest areas, we've got like this still got this pitch black pixels and this purple noise because it basically just can't lighten. It can't extract any more detail from that section of the photo. Whereas if we look in here, and that's still loading, again, the raw pitch is the bigger, so you do have to wait for it. But we can see that we've got these sort of lines in the container visible now, even right down to almost in this very dark crack. And yeah, there's a lot of noise at this point, but we can see what's in this dark area. Whereas in the JPEG, you can see the lines, but it's just a bit of a mess of pixels by this point. And if we try and change the temperature of the photo, you can do it, but it just doesn't doesn't look quite right. I mean, that's it. Ultimately, these some of these differences are things that you notice know more if you are, you know, the one that's looking at it all the time. But I think there is something to be said for taking your photos to the best quality, and then, you know, in years time. If you ever want to use them, they're still done as best as possible. Um, yeah, so, you know, always take the highest quality photo you can, I think, and um, you're on to a winner. Right, let's remove that one. We don't need that anymore. So, for the photo merging, 
we quickly could give it one more go. Um, we can give it one more try, I reckon. Just to prove, just to sort of recap. Um, I know I waffled quite a bit there. <laughs> There's a lot you can discuss and a lot more you can do beyond the basics of what I'm showing. But let's try, let's try one more picture. What one have we not done yet? Hmm, what photo looks good? Got these ones. We've already done that one, I think. This one here, this looks like it could be quite a good one to try. Or, let's do this one. Yeah, we've not edited this one yet. So let's do it. So again, it's five photos because I've taken it in the bracketing mode. We've got the mid one. We've got the really dark one the slightly darker one, the slightly lighter one, and a really lighter one. And again, you know, I've taken all those photos from the same point on a tripod without moving the camera. So when we overlay them, there's not gonna be any difference in the edges. It's gonna be nice and sharp still. And we're gonna merge all of these together. So we're gonna go photo merge, HDR. And this is gonna make the composite of all of those pictures. So we're going to let it create it as it likes to do. <laughs> Hopefully it won't take forever again. Right, it's merged them and straight away I can see that that's a pretty good picture. And it's not come out too bright this time. Yeah, the grass has come out a little bit too green but that's easy to rectify. Now we're gonna do this de-ghosting thing just as a test again quickly, just to see if the movement in the trees from the wind is going to cause us a problem. So we're gonna let it build its preview. Great iron photography, cheers. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, with the photography and stuff, um, you know, it's something that Joe and I, we've learned it over the years just through trial and error, just like the video editing, making the website, the whole lot really. We've started as absolute amateurs and we've just sort of learned through getting things wrong really and um, experimenting with new kit, new techniques, new software. And with the photos and, and the video making, you just sort of get better as it get better with it just through trying different things. It seems it's not responding. <laughs> God. Right, I think it's done it. Thank God it saved itself. Um, but yeah, we can see we've got some red areas here where I'm guessing the wind has moved the trees a little bit. So yeah, we're gonna have this de-ghosting amount. I think we're gonna set that to medium to hopefully try and correct that. So we're gonna press merge it's going to create this composite image now yeah this is something i actually remember trying this for the first time in photoshop back at school um and just being a bit overwhelmed by everything and thinking like crikey you know <laughs> there's there's a lot i'm doing here um but then i didn't you know i didn't even take like long exposure photography i didn't even do night photography at that point much um it's just something you have to give it a go. And I think once you break the back of it, of anything you want to do with photos, once you've tried it once and understood it, it's so much easier to just repeat that again the next time. Don't be afraid to sort of try stuff. Um, and you learn what takes too long and what is too much effort and what is worth doing. Um, that's another thing. I think you sort of, you know, there's a lot of, um, a lot to be said about efficiency as well, especially, when you're on the go in the outdoors or sneaking around somewhere exploring um, so you know you find what works for you really so it should have merged those pictures together somewhere <laughs> God. right this is it right this is the one it's come out at the end for some reason so this is the original one and that's just a single photograph taken with the exposure and the settings just set to normal sort of natural lighting, um, just the photo taken. 
um, you know, as it would probably look if I took it on automatic mode. Then here we've got the dark and the light photos all merged together. And this is the result. It's a much more vivid image, that much is for certain. Um, the sky isn't too bright. The edges of the branches are visible, as was pointed out. The shadow in here, in the porch is visible. Um, the sign is clear. Um, compare that to this one, it's, it's quite dark in there. Um, this, the sky is a bit too bright, the edges of the branches are getting washed away by the light. But again, we've got this problem of it being a little bit too vibrant. Um, so we're going to take that down a little bit. The saturation we can also take down. Or what we can do, as I showed earlier, we just come down to here and just take the greens down a little bit. That's it. So, you know, that's the end result with a little bit of adjustment to the color. Now, some people might like it like that. Personally, I don't like it when photos are too bright because I think for this sort of photography, you want that moodiness and that dark atmosphere. So, if we take the highlights down a bit more, we get a little bit more detail again coming out back into the sky. And I might even take the exposure down one notch. That's more like it. Let's come up with the whites. So from what I gather, the whites are just the the very highest points of the highlights. So we don't want to bring up the whole sky, but we just want to bring up some of these very whitish points. Pardon me. Yep, yeah, just bring it up a little bit. And then the shadows, we might want to boost them up a bit more again. That maybe not actually. Maybe that's good. I'd say that's good. And then the clarity slider. Again, that's not a nice effect. Not really sure what it's worth doing at all for this one. Which probably means we've done something right. Um, the proper way <laughs> without to use these sort of cheat effects. Again, that texture slider don't like that either so I think we're just gonna call it a day as it is I think that looks pretty good um, compare that to the original and there's just a night and day difference there one thing it I might do is just make this photo a little bit warmer hmm well maybe I liked it colder actually <laughs> but for the sake of demonstrating, we can compare that to um, to the original. It's a little bit closer colors wise. So this is the sort of normal photo and then this is the tone mapped or HDR or image composite, whatever you want to call it. And you can see quite a lot of difference there. Um, some people will like the effect, some people won't like the effect. But I think if used just a little bit in whatever way you want to do it, even if you're not taking the fire photos, even if you're just taking the highlights down and the shadows up a bit, I think that can just help to boost any photograph just a little bit. Um, yeah, so that's not too bad. A good example of what difference it makes is here. See these branches, they've almost disappeared. They're so Pale, they're so washed out from the, the sky. But then if I go up to this one, we can see right to the edges of the branches, which is more natural. Look at the difference. So that's something that this technique really helps. Um, now shooting in raw and just tweaking the highlights and shadows will make a big difference to this anyway. So, you know, I can bring that the highlights down anyway with this without having to merge all those five photos and you're already going to get like quite a good effect but if you just want to take it to the next level then you may want to consider doing this image composite um, as we've done here 
experiment a bit but the whole point of this is I suppose just to explore that HDR look that a lot of people talk about especially with the urbex photography um, that as I say was quite classic some time ago and now is a little bit less favourable um, and just sort of see if you like it if you don't um, and what is it and when can it be useful um, I think my favourite photo that benefited most from this is that one that I took in the porchway. It's not that one. It's this one here. That photo, I think that's a, a nice image, what we've got out of that. Maybe I will darken it down just a tiny bit. But yeah, I think that's a, that is a good shot. Um, that's really sort of been brought out from the original. That's not the original. Yeah, so look, the difference and the amount of depth to the different areas of photos you get by applying the tone mapped effect. Um, so it can really make a difference and it's a nice sharp photo as well. So obviously I kept it nice and steady. Um, definitely pleased with that. Um, and you know, I think with photos, I say less is more. So sometimes don't, if you expect the photos to look completely different, then you probably just should take a better photo in the first place um, because there's only so much you can do before you start ruining a photo. And um, you know, I think it's sometimes in subtleties where the better photos start to shine. Um, yeah. So that there's a massive difference there. So the HDR effect, it can be really useful, especially for images like this, where you've got the really bright space through the, the doorway and the sort of like windows or whatever you want to call them. And then this really darker area in the middle, it's helped to even those out and make the lighting of those areas much more similar. So if we compare the doorway and the trees out there to so maybe the ground. When I was actually there, it was really bright outside and inside was really dark. But in this photo, we can see them both at about the same level of lighting and we can see all the detail in them because of that. And it gives quite a nice gritty textured look, which I think suits this sort of subject matter, this sort of photography. Um, but for some photography, it's not gonna suit it. You know, if for instance, I don't know, say you were doing like a wedding photography or something and you wanted to make people look really, you know, glamorous and and like quite, you know, pure and and things like, you know, if you were taking portraits and you wanted people's skin to look smooth, stuff like that, then if you're gonna apply effect like this, they're probably gonna end up looking like they've been through a battle or something. <laughs> like all the blemishes on them are gonna start coming out because it's bringing all that detail out of the image. Um, so it may not be appropriate for all types of photography, but I think with something like abandonment, it's definitely got a degree of appropriateness. Um, it's not dead yet completely. <laughs> But I'm gonna see if I can find an exaggerated version. Because I wanna show sort of like the very extreme end of this. So these are just some more subtle examples. This is quite cool. Um, so we can bring this over. You've got this image here, they've definitely tone mapped that and you can see all the detail out of the windows, you can see the trees and you can see in the house. Same with that shot. There it does have quite a cool effect. Uh, and it also makes them look a bit like a painting, which I think is what draws people to it. Um, it sort of maybe blurs a line between ph photography and um, paintings and that sort of artwork, which a lot of people sort of um, want to try and get across in their photos that these photos aren't just I saw this place but it's that's my art you know and I think this effect definitely helps to emphasize that but also it does mean that the places don't look as natural so you may find they look too unnatural if you overdo the effect for instance this image here it's a bit small um, but look at that like they've, they've pushed that to the extreme all the 
plants out the window and the, the wallpaper and concrete in the room look almost exactly the same um, because they've really exaggerated that tone mapping, that HDR effect. And I think this is where it gets a little bit extreme. It does still look quite cool, but it is a bit of a one trick pony. Once you've seen it a few times, it, you know, it's kind of like, oh, you know, yeah, you did, you did that. <laughs> it's a quite, it's a very easily identifiable effect. And I guess what could be quite an individual thing eventually ends up becoming quite, you know, copycat-ish if you just kind of do the same thing. And um, again, this image is very heavily HDR'd and tone mapped. And you can see out of this room, I suppose in real life, this room is probably lit a lot brighter or darker than the room with these shelves in. Because they've done this effect, everything looks almost the same. But it does give it quite a cool look. Almost a dusty, mouldy look, which I guess is definitely appropriate for the location. So, you know, some people like it, some people hate it. But as I'd say for a lot of things, even with Marmite, is moderation is key. You know, if you don't overdo something, it can help you. If you if you do, it's gonna ruin things. So <laughs> um, yeah, there we go. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you found it interesting. I guess I might as well end this there. It's probably gone on for a while now. Um, how long? Well, I began on for an hour and 20. I can't believe that. Um, Adam, so doing some GCSE photography at school. So it's, as I've said, you know, I did art photography at school as well. Honestly, it's, it's amazing. Like if I could go back and do it all again, I would in a heartbeat. <laughs> um, yeah, good luck with it. And yeah, maybe try a few of these things out. Um, you know, start simple, you know, if, you, if you've not sort of practiced this sort of thing before. But um, just try a few effects and see what you like, see what you don't like. And as with anything, as as um, the curriculum and stuff is willing to point out, it's all about the process and the learning curve, and that never ends, even when you, <laughs> even when you left school years ago, and um, you do this thing for fun. Although it does feel like a job at times. <laughs> um, yeah, um, yeah. This is um, hopefully it's been a good one. It's been really good fun. Um, cheers, Tinks. Cheers for the advice and stuff with the chromatic aberration. I'm definitely going to have to have a look into that myself properly later because that's definitely something I could bring into my photos that I haven't done much of yet. Um, and yeah, great stuff. Great to see you. Thanks a lot, everyone, um, for watching. Uh, I'm glad people actually enjoy these because I do feel as though I'm going to be kind of waffling to myself when I do these tutorials. Um, <laughs> um, but you know, these are even less productive than when I do them on my own, believe it or not. Um, and you know, we've got loads of photos to edit and stuff. Um, and you know, sometimes it's nice though to not worry about getting the, the numbers done and just sort of focus on one or two pictures and trying to create something a bit more special with them and give them the special treatment. So yeah. Glad everyone liked it. Um, let us know if there's any ideas, of course, for more tutorials. I know Joe, he was saying at some point he was thinking about doing one for the video editing, so you might see that. Um, so, you know, obviously, you know, there's only sort of like, we can only do so much when, you know, it's just me or Joe in a video at once. We can't sort of, I can only show you what I do. Joe can only show you what he'd do. We both obviously do things slightly differently, but I think we've learned similarly and we've learned from each other over the years. So you should sort of learn a bit about what we do in general at BCP um, for our website and stuff, for the photos on there. So yeah, thanks a lot. Um, see you later, everyone. <laughs> Take care um, and um, happy adventuring. Now I need to end it. There we go. See ya.